Hey guys, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. And today we take a look at the highly anticipated Sigma 14mm f1.8 art series lens for Sony FE mount full frame cameras like the A7R Mark III. Sigma has been on a major roll for about a half a decade now with their Global Vision line of lenses, most notably the Art Series line which is targeted to compete against the higher end offerings from both Canon with their L line and Nikon with their high end professional F1.4 G line of lenses and of course Sigma is also competing against Sony's G Master line. What's separating Sigma however is their willingness to break out of the confines of what's traditionally held other manufacturers back and that is Sigma is creating high quality niche lenses and they're clearly targeting professionals. It seems like everyone in the camera industry has been on a keto diet lately except for Sigma. While nearly all of the manufacturers have been engineering the bulk and the weight out of their cameras and lenses, Sigma has gone in completely the opposite direction and they believe that bigger and heavier is clearly better as they've been putting out lenses with huge apertures and long focal lengths. The results have been some amazing optics with a bit, well no, make that a hunk of additional weight. It's as if the industry is acting like they're dealing with a shortage of glass and Sigma is coming into the marketplace and giving everyone the middle finger as their lenses have been anything but dainty or lightweight. The resulting imagery however has been nothing short of impressive. As a real estate photography professional I was eager to get my hands on the Sigma 14mm f1.8 art for my real estate work both in video and stills and combined with the a7R Mark III they have proven to be a formidable combination. How formidable you might ask? Well, stick around and let's find out. So first up is the build and here Sigma makes no apologies. The 14mm f1.8 art is unrepentingly huge. Coming in at 2.57 pounds or 1170 grams, the Sigma is the photographic equivalent of a sumo wrestler. In fact, I've named this, nicknamed this lens Baby Huey and with good reason because it's a sculpted monster of what Sigma refers to as thermally stable composites and metals for quote greater precision and use in wide temperature variations. Now here in southwest Florida in the summertime it gets hot and the interior of your car can hit temperatures of 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of those hot summer days. And over time this kind of construction is important because we will invariably have to leave our gear in the car during some of those time periods. Meaning that kind of construction is in fact reassuring to us. Now moving on to the lens itself, the focus ring is remarkably smooth and buttery with perfect resistance. Now check out that front element. As Ken Wheeler described it on our recent photo walk, he said this thing kind of looked like the top of a witch's crystal ball and honestly I'd have to agree. It's beastly but it's also exposed so I encourage you to keep the lens cap on as you move from room to room or place to place because Bumping into a wall or a door is a real possibility and you're going to risk damaging the lens. Now speaking of the lens hood, I absolutely love what Sigma has done with their wide angle lens caps. They provide a nice snug fit around the front element of the lens. And unlike my Nikon 14 to 24, the cap does not come off during transport or when I'm taking the camera in and out of my car. Kudos Sigma, it's a great design and I wish Nikon would take a page from your book and emulate this kind of lens cap. On the inside we have an optical formula of 16 elements arranged in 11 groups and included in that formula is one F low dispersion element and four, count them, four SLD or special low dispersion elements. These elements help reduce color fringing and chromatic aberrations. In addition, a super multi-layer coating has been applied to the elements. That helps minimize flare and ghosting. And lastly, there's one large 80 millimeter diameter precision molded glass aspherical element that helps minimize distortion. And this all sounds really impressive. The aperture ranges from a very bright f1.8 all the way to f16. And speaking of the aperture, there are nine rounded aperture blades. And this is interesting because, as I've mentioned on virtually every other wide angle lens review that I've ever done, we don't typically or usually buy ultra wide angle lenses for their dazzling bokeh abilities. In fact, it's usually the opposite. We buy one of these to get everyone or everything in a scene in focus. But the 14 has a really neat party trick because unlike virtually all ultra wides, the Sigma has a very wide f1.8 aperture. And I'm pleased to say that when you get relatively close to the camera, 
the lens does in fact have the ability to beautifully throw the background out of focus, which in my opinion, opens up the door to a ton of creative possibilities. Now we'll get into that more in the optics section. Now Sigma has outfitted the 14 with their latest HSM or hypersonic motor, meaning that autofocus speed is brisk and very quiet. Lastly, the lens is in fact dust and moisture resistant. So the bottom line is, build just doesn't get much better than this, and the 14 earns a perfect 10 out of 10 for build quality. So next up is autofocus speed and accuracy. Like most ultra wide angle lenses, even at the widest apertures, the bulk of the scene is gonna be rendered in focus. And for landscape and real estate photographers, that's exactly what we're looking for. But if you happen to be a vlogger, and yes, I said vlogger, we used to say vmail for voicemail, and the word vlogger just sounds kind of funny to me, so sorry. So let's say you use your Sony a7R III like me. Well, you can use this lens for your video logs, and at f1.8, you're gonna be close to the camera, and the resulting image becomes less distracting because the background falls out of focus, and the bokeh quality is actually kind of nice, especially for a wide-angle lens. But anyway, how's the AF? Well, it's fast, but I find that it can be, in fact, indecisive, especially at f1.8. And you might be better suited, suited utilizing point focus rather than wide focus, because with that big of a scene, you're gonna leave a lot up to the camera to decide what to focus on, especially if there isn't a person in the scene to focus on. But even with point focus, the 14 is still a bit slow and indecisive before it latches onto and captures focus. It'll bounce around, like back and forth, the intended target like once or twice before it actually captures focus. Now this isn't a huge deal if you're shooting landscape or real estate where the bulk of the people utilizing this lens will probably be using it. So that kind of AF is likely not gonna be a deal breaker. Continuous autofocus does in fact bounce back and forth a little bit. But fortunately, again, the depth of field is so wide or so relatively wide and the lens doesn't breathe all that much so you don't really notice it. But it is definitely there. The minimum focus distance is just over 10 and a half inches, meaning you can get really close to your subject and the Sigma can offer some value as a macro lens. Now let's talk about manual focus because unlike native Sony FE lenses, the Sigma actually has a focus distance meter. Yes, videographers can rejoice. And what that means is the lens is not fly by wire, which also means the focus ring is actually physically connected to and moves the focusing elements within the lens. Woohoo! I wish Sony and other third-party manufacturers would do this too. Now combined with the buttery smoothness of the 14's focus ring, manual focus is extraordinarily well implemented. So all in, autofocus speed is quick but not super decisive. It will in fact hunt a little bit at times and you may be better served utilizing point focus to limit what you want the lens and the camera to focus on. It's not great, but for my kind of shooting, I can live with this kind of autofocus speed. By the way, when the lens does in fact decide, it's very accurate. I just wish it did it a little bit more quickly and a little bit more decisively. So for AF speed and accuracy, the Sigma gets a seven and a half out of 10. So next up is where we get down to brass tacks. And in a word, the optical quality is really, really excellent. I've been shooting real estate professionally for about 10 years. And this may in fact be the best lens that I've used to date. Combined with its super bright aperture of f1.8, the Sigma opens the door to creative possibilities for both video and stills. I never thought I could get any kind of real subject isolation with a wide angle lens like this, but the Sigma has me rethinking that supposition. If you're a video logger, this will give you a really nice combination with your A7 camera. But back to image quality. Center sharpness, even at f1.8, is simply sublime. And the edges stop down to say f8 or f9, which is where I shoot the bulk of my real estate work, is nothing short of amazing. At f1.8, unless the whole scene is on the same focal plane, then it's kind of difficult to measure edge to edge sharpness at the lens's widest aperture in a real world situation like photographing a bedroom, for example. Chromatic aberrations and the high contrast areas, so far as I can tell, they're virtually non-existent, and flare is extraordinarily well controlled, again, for a wide angle lens. Now, if there's one area where the Sigma falls a little bit short, it's vignetting, which is huge at f1.8, but it's also just a click away from repair with the lens profile correction that's available in Lightroom. Now that said, as with all my reviews, don't take my word for it, see for yourself. The next two to three minutes will be a series of stills and video clips showcasing the optical bravado of the Sigma 14 millimeter f1.8, and I think I just found my new real estate photography lens.
wanna get to your clothes, gotta get it right now I wanna push all the limits with you right now So watch your feelings, the city's screaming when I'm coming home tonight We're living quick in the world, gotta get it right now People talk and tell what you wanna hear now But they all disappear, they will let you down so We better stick together, let's come whatever We're not coming home tonight We're living quick in the world, gotta get it right now So last up is value, and I admit you're going to need to think long and hard before you plunk down the nearly $1,600 that it'll take to get your hands on one of these. Big and heavy and making no excuses for its size, the Sigma delivers with absolutely amazing image quality and some optical attributes that separated from the pack in the wide-angle lens world, notably that really fat f1.8 aperture, which is amazing for low light shooting like astrophotography, night photography, and my gig of real estate photography. Not to mention the unique look that you're going to get if you're, if you're a vlogger. vlogger. In my opinion, the Sigma really delivers and the key differentiator is that f1.8 aperture. Now there are plenty of competitors out there, even Sigma itself, that have 14 to 24, 15 to 30, and 16 to 35 f2.8 lenses. Now admittedly, you give up a lot of versatility, but you gain a stop and a third of light. That's not insignificant, which means the Sigma should absolutely be worthy of your consideration. Again, it's $1,599, but its lack of versatility is mostly offset by its f1.8 aperture. And to me, the results of the Sigma are nothing short of magical. Now, there are two important downsides. AF definitely hunts at f1.8, and there is huge vignetting wide open. The former is clearly a much bigger issue, chiefly if you're planning on using the Sigma in any sort of situation outside of photographing static subjects. The latter is just a click away in Lightroom. But all in for value, the Sigma gets a nine out of 10. So to wrap up this review, we gave the Sigma 14 millimeter F1.8 art series lens a 46 out of 50 and our highly recommended rating. The final word, Sigma has been making moves into uncharted territory for a few years now, coming out with niche lenses with unique apertures and unique value propositions. Even with their zoom lenses, Sigma continues to push the photographic envelope, and in the process of offering these really unique lenses, Sigma has made no apologies with regard to the size and weight of these optics. It's as if they don't care and are only interested in getting the best possible optical results, even if the lenses themselves come in as bloated as a 747. Now, if you're prepared to deal with that physically, then you're going to be in for an optical treat. But make sure you make it to the gym and stay in shape to handle these magnificent beasts of lenses, courtesy of Sigma. I'm Darren Miles. 
with Darren Miles Photography, and I'm based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like these reviews, be sure to give me a like, or better yet, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, happy shooting. For video logging or vlogging, isn't that cool? What's going on, guys? It's Audie, and welcome back to another Fortnite video where the new double barrel shotgun came back. Bye. Very good.